after completing the signing of Declan Rice and spending over £200 million, Arsenal remain busy in the transfer market. And today we'll find out what's next for the Gunners. We'll also discuss the latest news from Fabrizio Romano, find out what's happening with Thomas Partey, break down a potential move for a wide forward and find out where Arsene Wenger believes Arsenal will finish next season. Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Bows14 and welcome back to your boys channel. I hope you guys are doing sensational, enjoying yourselves the rice. But what is next for Arsenal? Well, we're going to find out. So as per, smash a like on the video if you enjoy, subscribe to the channel if you are new and help your boy on his road to 200,000 subscribers. But starting off with Arsenal's phase two, after spending nearly 200 million pounds, three signings in the door, Arsenal's focus turns to the USA. Here was the Arsenal first team squad all lined up, ready for their flight to the USA. Arsenal even gave us a behind the scenes access, with Mohamed Donneni on vlogging duties, going through the entire Arsenal squad with the vibes looking immaculate. But who exactly is going? Arsenal confirmed their entire squad. From Aaron Ramsdale to William Saliba, Kieran Tierney to Ben White, Gabriel Bukayo Saka, Martin Odegaard, Gabriel Jesus, Gabriel Martinelli, Yuri and Timber, Alex Ronison, Eddie Nketi, Jakub Kivio, Rob Holding, Takahiro Tomiyasu, Trossard, Georgino Vieira, Elneny Balogun, Marquinhos, Havertz, Karl Hein, Trusty Zinchenko, Rice and Kuzio Dubri. Some key absentees there and Fabrizio Romano explains why. Nicola Pepe, Albert Samuel Lukonga and Cedric are all out of the Arsenal squad travelling for the preseason tour and Mills Mifro and Thomas Partey will join the team next week. Now I want to focus on the youngsters. No Ethan Wanieri, Miles Ruskelly or Rue Waters. A lot of Arsenal fans are surprised but there is space for Armia Kuzia Dubri. This seems to be a planned move by Arsenal. As Kaya Kayanet confirms, the idea was to give Waters, Wanieri and Skelly the Germany tour and to give Kuzia Dubri the USA tour. These next three games are massive for Mikel Arteta. He wants to prepare his first team, ready for a gruelling Premier League start. Unfortunately, that means less time for youngsters. There was space though for the likes of Rob Holding and Alex Ronison. This may come across confusing, but these are two players that Arsenal are trying to sell. This may be a move to maximise their market value, to show the teams that want to sign them that they are a part of the Arsenal first team squad. There was no space though for Cedric Suarez. And according to Chris Wheatley, Mikel Arteta took the technical decision to leave Cedric Suarez back in the UK. The player is not close to leaving as of today, but his situation is likely to develop in the coming weeks. Cedric is in the final year of his Arsenal contract. After a pretty mediocre loan spell at Fulham, eight appearances and only two starts. According to the Gunner blog, Cedric's preference is to stay at Arsenal and fight for a place and try to play in the Champions League. The ambition may be there, but the space is not. With Ben White, Takahiro Tomiyasu and a signing of Yuri and Timber, Arsenal are stacked at the right back. You've also got quite a few other Arsenal players. According to Kai Kainak, Nicola Pepe and Albert Samuel Lukonga are both absent from the Arsenal squad of the USA due to injury. While Nuno Tavares is on holiday, none of these four players are expected to join the squad in the USA. What is happening with Nuno Tavares? Kaya Kayanak confirms Tavares is not in the Arsenal plans going forwards. The player would like to stay in the Premier League. Loads of potential interest from other clubs, but no formal offer. Interest in the Premier League is exactly what Arsenal want to hear. Those teams have the most money to spend. Tavares has got two years left on his Arsenal contract. At 23 years of age, there's a lot of potential there. There might be a decent fee here. We've also got a Fabrizio Romano exclusive. Regarding the future of an Arsenal youngster, as he reveals it's been agreed that talented goalkeeper Arthur Okonkwo, 21 years of age, can leave Arsenal on a permanent deal this summer. His contract expires next summer. After the Sturm Graz loan last season, Okonkwo is now subject to interest from clubs in England and across Europe. His loan spell in Austria was very successful. 15 starts in the second half of last season, helping Sturm Graz win the Austrian Cup final. This guy is a giant of a goalkeeper, 6'6 six six in height, a lot of potential there. But Arsenal have Aaron Ramsdale, who as things stands is rated as the most expensive goalkeeper in the world. Only 25 years of age and after signing a brand new contract, Okonkwo realises he needs to move elsewhere. And Arsenal also have his younger brother, Brian Okonkwo at 17 years of age. The Okonkwo family seems to have the goalkeeper genetic. The future of Nicola Pepe is also uncertain. Not involved for the Arsenal squad going to the USA. The Gunner block confirms Pepe is training alone mostly, not seen as a part of the group and has not been reintegrated. Now he is currently injured so that maybe explains why. Training on his own to regain his fitness. Ultimately he's not a part of Mikel Arteta's plans and there are teams interested. According to James Bench, Nicola Pepe has been approached by a Saudi club but at the moment there is a big difference in wage expectations. After signing Pepe for £72 million in 2019, a record signing on massive wages, teams in Europe will not want to pay the high wages. Saudi Arabia is the only place out there that can find Pepe a compromise. According to Chris Wheatley, Nicola Pepe is very open to a move to Saudi Arabia. We've also got a breaking update on the future of Xavi Simons, a confirmed Arsenal transfer target, who Fabrizio Romano now confirms. Xavi Simons has left the PSV camp to sign with Paris Saint-Germain. PSG have triggered a 6 million euro buyback clause, as revealed days ago. Understand there are two ways now. If Mbappe or Neymar leaves, Xavi will stay at PSG. If both stay, Xavi will join another club on loan. 
a surprise move and things are moving quickly. Simons has straight away been loan listed, trying to get first team football next season. Fabrizio Romano confirms, Xavi Simons is convinced that RB Leipzig is the best option for his future if he has to leave PSG. He will communicate his decision on Monday. Leipzig are ready with a loan deal with no buy option. Xavi would return to PSG in 2024 to be a part of the long-term project. This seems like an odd move, but PSG have sold Simon the dream. The reason why Arsenal haven't made a move is obvious. They would have wanted a player on a permanent transfer, but PSG are only sanctioning a loan and there is no buy option included. This next year is is going to be massive for Fabio Vieira. His first year was ravaged with injuries, 33 overall appearances, 8 goal contributions. Arsenal fans need to see more and they will be two very important factors. First things first, Vieira needs to get more experience. Last year in the Premier League, he only made three starts. Experience is the best way for players to grow. It helps with building rhythm and chemistry. Last year, it was averaging 24 minutes per game. But then you have the player himself. And the one thing that I want to see is him be more brave. Vieira has a lot of natural qualities and ability to do special things. 14 assists for Porto the season before signing for Arsenal. Vieira is meant to be our version of a Bruno Fernandes. A risk-taking profile. Now is the time to impose himself. Show the Arsenal fans on Mikel Arteta has signed him. In terms of the future of Thomas Partey, according to reports Thomas Partey is edging towards an exit from Arsenal. These rumours are not going away. A move to Saudi Arabia is definitely a possibility. Arsenal would get over £40 million. This can only mean one thing. Arsenal will sign one more big quality midfielder. There had been some rumours of a Barcelona Frankie de Jong, but reports in Spain confirm. Frankie de Jong is staying at Barcelona, as he is a fundamental player for Xavi and his salary is unaffordable even for clubs at Man City. Arsenal are looking for a second phase midfielder, similar to the profile of Granit Xhaka, comfortable defending but also going forwards. The profile of Moses Caicedo is almost perfect, but as the Athletic reveal, Declan Rice was a deal that Arsenal ideally wanted to do six months earlier, but the West Ham chairman David Sullivan did not want to lose him during a relegation battle. While Rice always remained the primary target for Arsenal, sensing a January deal was not possible, they turned their attention to Moses Caicedo. However, Brighton stood firm, so Arsenal pivoted again to a short-term option in Jorginho. In the weeks that followed the January transfer window, Arsenal resumed the pursuit of their primary target Declan Rice. There seems to be a bit of confusion here. For so long we were told it was Declan Rice and Moses Caicedo, but was it instead an alternative? According to The Athletic, Arsenal burned some bridges with the Brighton hierarchy in January, with the persistence to sign Moses Caicedo. There was a feeling that Chelsea had done so much groundwork ahead of this window that Caicedo was virtually wrapped up in the blue ribbons. But Arsenal did check in with the players camp, when progress appeared to be slow with West Ham over the fee for Declan Rice. The fact that Arsenal made a £70 million offer in January, the interest was genuine. In my eyes, he would be the perfect party replacement, in terms of quality and versatility. As Fabrizio Romano and Stands. Chelsea will improve their bid for Moses Caicedo this week. It's not about the official bids as Chelsea and Brighton are discussing directly club to club, but the proposal will be improved. More than £70 million fixed. Chelsea hope to get it done this week and are still waiting for a reason. They could only sign a midfielder after the departure of Thomas Partey. It all begs the question that if it's not going to be Moses Caicedo, who will Arsenal sign to replace Thomas Partey? Moving on to Arsenal's forward moves. The future of following Balogun is getting interesting. As you can see here, he is a part of the Arsenal squad that has travelled to the USA, training alongside new Arsenal signing Urien Timber. Balogun has been speaking to the press. On his future, he says, I think when we coming back, it's not really much of a situation where I can think I need to try extra hard to prove something. I think it's a decision that's not really with me. Whatever happens, I'm cool with it. Balogun has a natural confidence. He comes across as someone that knows what he wants, and there is interest growing. According to James Bench, following Balogun has emerged as a first choice target for Inter Milan since they withdrew from the race for Romero Lukaku. Inter are ready to test Arsenal's price tag with a 40 million euro bid, with the opening offer expected imminently. Even Fabrizio Romano has had his say, confirming that Inter will answer the final conditions of the following Balogun deal early next week. Balogun is open to a permanent move, but Arsenal are expected to request an important fee. Arsenal understand the market. Strikers are of a premium. When you've got a player at 21 years of age with a bagload of potential, that has just scored over 20 league goals in a top 5 league. Imagine how much it cost Arsenal if they were signing the player. James Ben says, Inter Milan's opening offer for Fulham Balogun is likely to fall short of Arsenal's demands, with the club's £50 million valuation equating to €58 million. Euros. Inter could look to include a series of clauses, including a sell-on percentage or a buyback option. A buyback option would be fantastic. Let's say Balogun was to explode, become one of the best strikers in Europe, Arsenal would be able to re-sign him. Mikel Arteta has spoken. Now we have to think what is the best thing to do. We want to see him. We want to experience him in the next few games. Arsenal's next step is clear. It's all about getting the player sales, recouping as much money as possible, and then they will go again. Mikel Arteta confirms that we will be alert. There is a lot of time still in the market. We have to see how things develop in the next couple of weeks. There is still time to do things. Exits as well.
Keep an eye on the forward department. As Chris Wheatley confirms, Reese Nelson is out for two weeks with a minor toe injury, but expected to be available for the Emirates Cup. A wide forward is still on the agenda. John Cross confirms, it's clear that Arsenal's transfer business is not finished yet. Despite the £210 million outlay, they are still in the market for a new right-sided forward as they look to bolster their squad. The profile of a left-footed right winger stands out and that's where you of course have Moussa Diaby, a long-term Arsenal target, wanted by the likes of Aston Villa. Ben Jacobs confirms, Al-Nasir have now made a €43 million Euro bid for Moussa Diaby. Leverkusen are pushing for closer to 55, but al are hoping a strong payment term can change their mind. Villa saw their first bid rejected, but will be back. So far, Arsenal have not made an offer, but they could be waiting to let the other teams negotiate, see how much it will take to get a deal done and then choose if they want to enter the race. You've also got a free transfer opportunity. Sammy Mockbill confirms, Wilfred Zaha is still being treated for a season-ending hamstring injury amid uncertainty over his availability for the start of a new campaign. Zaha has continued to have physio at Palace's Beckenham HQ. With the departure of Granit Xhaka and maybe Thomas Partey, Arsenal are losing Premier League experience. Zaha would offer that in abundance. He wants to play in the Champions League, scoring seven goals in the Premier League last season. Arsenal are looking for opportunities. As the Gunner Block confirms, if there is room for one more attacker, maybe Arsenal can look for a more opportunistic signing. This is pure speculation on my part, but one I might keep an eye on is João Felix. Felix is back at Atletico after a pretty mediocre loan spell at Chelsea. Four goals and 11 starts. There were some glimpses of what he could offer. Take for example his debut against Fulham. A 0.82 xG, four shots on target, two successful dribbles, one big chance missed and 16 accurate passes. This profile suits what Mikel Arteta wants. Forwards that can cause chaos. Arsenal wanted the player back in January but Chelsea was the only team willing to offer a massive loan fee. The player is definitely going to be available, but with a contract until 2027, the price tag is going to be massive. What about the future of Dusan Vlavic? Fabrizio Romano understands that Dusan Vlavic can leave Juventus, but only for an important bid. He is one of the four strikers being considered by PSG. Now Juve are making some weird moves. As it stands, they are trying to sign Romelu Lukaku. Vlavic's future is a massive doubt. After scoring 10 goals in a Serie A last season, 14 goals down from the season before, Vlaovic remains an old school striker and a profile that Arsenal don't really have. Mikel Arteta has always wanted a target man profile, but Arsenal have a very unique style of playing, which requires players that are comfortable on the ball. Last year, Vlaovic was averaging 10 passes per game. You compare that to Gabriel Jesus, who's averaging 21. If Arsenal are going to change the style of play, it's worth doing it for Dusan Vlaovic. The only player that stands out to me is Napoli's Victor Osimhen. Moving on to the other Arsenal news today, and starting off with the arrival of the Arsenal first team. They are officially in the United States, and a part of that squad is a record signing Declan Rice. As you can see here, enjoying his first Arsenal training session, fit and he's available. It still feels a little bit surreal seeing him in the Arsenal colours. But as Mikel Arteta says, his leadership is aura, obviously the experience he already has in this league, he is going to bring this team a different dimension. One thing that stands out to me is Rice's ability to grow. Take for example his 18-19 stats radar. His passing numbers were bang average. Fast forward just two seasons and Rice was up there with the very best in the Premier League. An example of an evolution and that will only continue at Arsenal. As pointed out by the official Champions League accounts, the UCL Knights are coming soon. His debut could be this Thursday as Arsenal take on the MLS All-Stars. And in that game, we might see a brand new Arsenal kit. As has been spotted, Arsenal's new away kit is being prepared at the Armoury store outside of the Emirates Stadium, suggesting the kit launch could be tomorrow. That is right, this infamous yellow and black kit is about to become official. In terms of the new season, there was a lot of expectations. After the signing of Rice and Timber, Arsenal have become the most valuable squad in the world, according to Transfermarkt. At over 1.21 billion euros, a lot of people are getting very excited and some are making some bold predictions. Arsenal legend Arsene Wenger has been speaking. For Arsenal in the upcoming season, he says, I believe we will win the championship. It's as simple as that. That is the video there and there though, so hopefully you guys have enjoyed. If you have, don't forget to smash a like and also subscribe to the channel if you are new. If you want to follow your boy in all of his social medias, then the links are down below in the description. But that was the latest episode of the Transfers FC. Arsenal are now in the USA, so let's stay tuned to see how things develop. But until then, I'll see you next time. Take care and in a bit.